what's up guys so I'm gonna do a video today on the overall markets and a couple tickets here um, before I get into this if you wouldn't mind hitting the like button leave a comment below let me know how you're doing and if you want to join the discord the links in the description below it's completely free so check that out I also do a small count challenge and update there frequently my entries exits thoughts and uh, thesis going forward on the day but let's get into it from a bigger picture as far as the S&P 500. So on the futures, um, we're still looking for weekly consolidation at some point. I just noticed this today. I'm going to reload my drawings here. I know it's messy up there, but this is what I want you to focus on. So if you look right here, we're overbought. And we've only been more overbought a handful of times ever since we've had futures so back in 2018 and then the other times is 1996 it looks like in 95 so we're definitely within the realm of historically overbought conditions on a weekly chart we can still continue to grind up and go push forward but we should be on the lookout for some kind of consolidation here in the near term maybe the next couple months could be this week who knows but definitely uh need to be mindful that this can turn at any moment because this weekly chart has been on an absolute tear. Um, let me undo my drawings for a quick second here. And you'll see that we've made a higher low than every previous week. Except for this little blip here. And I believe this one broke by like a couple dollars on this one. But it's pretty much a straight shot up. We haven't retested the 20 period moving average at all. Um, we're coming into a holiday week right now. So there's no trading on Friday. So if you're in any trades, be mindful of that. And we have no economic data really that's going to make any difference here. The only thing I'm seeing is GDP is coming out. Initial jobless games on uh, Thursday pre-market. Pending home sales at 10 a.m. And then on Friday when the market's closed, this is what's going to really matter is the PCE. That's the Fed's preferred um, inflation numbers. And Powell's going to come out and talk at 1130 and the markets are closed. Personally, I don't like this at all. The market's not open. And you have a long weekend. And this could impact how next week trades entirely. So I'm not sure I want to swing over that. Um, go down to the daily chart on ES. And this is very bullish. Um, we're still above the 8 exponential here, and we're trying to form a daily higher low for continuation. This is the trend line that I have on the 15-minute chart. And you can see it's held up here ever since consolidation right now, and we're trading around it right now. So I think once that breaks, that'll be significant as far as you know upside and forming our daily higher low. What I'm sort of looking at and I shared with the members in the Discord is I'm thinking as far as this is a buy zone. So going into the hourly chart, you can see we've had a lot of price history here. Rejected off it, rejected, came up into it and we busted out of it. So I think this is where I really want to buy if we can get that zone. If you go over to NQ, NQ has obviously been weaker this whole time. I still have this four hour trend line up above just to see how it interacts with it. And if you watch the previous videos, you can see obviously we touched there, broke through it there, touched there, touched there, and we snapped through it there. So I'm just keeping an eye on it, seeing how it interacts as far as, you know, going for a short maybe. Um, we're still in all time highs though. So we're in a weekly uptrend, we're above the eight exponential still. We do have some weekly bearish divergence, but that's very minor. We can easily negate that and push forward. On a daily chart, we're just looking for our daily higher low. We wicked off the 8 exponential today. This is the buy zone I have for NQ. And you can see that it aligns with the uh, 20 period moving average. And our FIB retracement. Golden Pocket aligns in there too, so I think this is a really good buy area if we can get down there. Be a good point to establish some longs. 
Um, like I said, I don't think I'm swinging anything over this weekend just because Pal talks on Friday. We have the PCE coming out Friday. And even if we're in a bullish uptrend, I'm not willing to take that over a weekend risk. I'd rather approach next week with a clean slate. But I will day trade this this week. The problem is we have, like I said, the holiday. And usually volume dries up going into the holidays. So it's not exactly the best weeks to trade, to be honest. But for now, kind of the way I'm looking at NQ is, I so said we wicked off that daily eight. What I would like to see is right now we're, we pushed up on the four hour chart and we're curling down. We're underneath the 20 and the eight, create a four hour higher low and snap that, confirm our daily higher lows set and push forward. There's not really much to talk about here besides where you would want to enter. Like I said, on ES and NQ, those were my zones. And that's what I'm kind of looking at going forward. If we can get down there, I'm going to take a long there. Or look to long tickers in general because I believe we'll bounce pretty heavily from that zone. So, um, yeah, all-time highs, bullish, just looking for daily higher lows right now. Where remains to be seen, but we need to establish some trend changes on shorter term time frames. Like I said, that four hour trend change on NQ. And now to go over some tickers here. I like to always start with the bigger picture here. I'm going to start with SMCI. I'm in a trade here still for May. So on a monthly chart, we're back to almost 93. We can still get more extended, but we are very extended from the 20, the 8. Still have a wick here. So we have this week yet to trade, and then this monthly bar will close. So, how these next three days here trade is going to give us a little bit more insight on what should occur next month. If they continue to push it up, we can get rid of most of this wick. Obviously, if we sell down, we can get a reversal. Ideally, get somewhere around, you know, the low of this candle's range. To show that we have a large upper wick, we want to consolidate, maybe hit this 8 next month, come down. We'll have to see how this is uh, trading these next couple of days here. On the weekly chart, we wicked off the 8 exponential last week. And we're trying to confirm that that's our weekly higher low. This is one day in. And this stock is very volatile. So we'll have to see. We're just trying to find our weekly higher low. In order for that to be truly confirmed, we want a daily trend change back to the bulls. As you can see, at the same time though, we're still overbought on the weekly. Not too much, but still overbought. We're in weekly consolidation. And this is what I'm trading right now. And I'm not gonna lie, it's a bit of a challenge. Um, this is where it can get hard. When we came down here from the all time high, we pushed up, lower high, lower low, significant follow through. From this high right here, our last lower high, we're looking for another lower high. So we're looking ultimately for another lower high. My thoughts right now with how this is pushing up is once we do pull back, we pushed up enough for a higher low on the daily, which means we could tighten up and grind premium. I don't like that at all. I do think ultimately we're going to cool off next couple months. This thing's really extended. So what I was saying in my last video, and I know there's a lot of lines on here, is this 1100-ish zone is a stone cold short, right? So you can see we wicked there, there, there. This was our support for a very long time. There, pushed up above and closed fiercely below it here. I believe this is the area. You can see we have our golden pockets right around there as well. We were overbought going into this day. So what I did going into the day is once we bull broke out of here, I tried to short against this 20. So I grabbed an initial position there. And then I grabbed another position right around here. Looking for this to snap, we are really overbought, bearish divergence, coming up into my zone. So I was like, okay, I got FOMO, to be entirely honest with you. It was piss poor trading and was expecting us to flush down. I could scale out of this one and then 
book profits and try to let this one play out for a further downside. We didn't get that, so I ate a pretty nice loss on the day. I did play calls on this break, but I cut those pretty early. I should have just let them as a hedge. So right now I only have my longer term swing puts and not sure how I'm going to play them right now. They're a little far out the money compared to what I like. I think it will definitely fill, but when is the question? And like I said, with how far we pushed up, we could burn premium here, which means time decay, Vega, there goes my option. So I might just have to take a loss on that as well, move on. And find the next trade. I do think we're setting a daily lower high. And I'm still going to play that. I'm not sure when. I think this is the area. This is where I want to take a stone cold short. Like I said, 1100-ish. If you look on the hourly, we got pretty hot. We were almost at 80. And if we decide to push up again, we're going to have hourly bearish divergence coming into the zone. I also drew this trend line up here to see if we reject off that. Um, JP Morgan's target was 1150, which oddly enough, if you see this, that last day when we pushed up before we got our big flush was right at 1150. So that could also be it. I think we're definitely in the area for that short. Like I said, the most likely scenario is a daily lower high. And with the extent of this push up, Unfortunately, the odds favor a higher low, so we could buy off this zone right down here now. So say we pushed up on a daily chart, reject, come down, set our daily higher low, continue to tighten up, premium's going to get burned, calls and puts are going to lose. So that's exactly what institutional money wants. They sell options, they don't buy them. I mean, sometimes they buy them, obviously, but... They mainly sell options. That's where they make it, especially when you have premiums this juiced up. So, unfortunately, both sides are going to end up losing after this is set. This is the most likely scenario, and I, this is the last part of the trade that I want to try to hit. After that, I'm not touching this damn thing. It can do its own thing, consolidate, and I won't be interested in it again until we get a daily uh, oversold conditions or... We tighten up, form some kind of longer term triangle, I'm thinking. Like, say we pull back, right? Got this push up, higher low on the weekly, lower high. We pull back and we form some kind of triangle into the future. I'll play that break, but that's, that's a long time. I'm not planning on playing this thing again for a little while. The volatility is going to dry up here pretty soon. The easy money was made here. And then the first drop, this is the harder part of the trade. And not my most favorite to try to get, but I thought it was pretty good odds when I looked at this uh, zone here. And that's why I wanted to take the short, but I was not disciplined earlier. And I'm going to be completely transparent with everyone here. I should not have entered when I did. There was no sign or signal. I just tried scaling into it. And like I said, I exited my calls, which would have paid really nice. I hedged against my original position. Um... It was not a good trading day for me. I was not following my trade plan. If there's anything you would take away from this, always follow your trade plan when you're sober-minded because you put that together for a reason. And obviously, if I would have shorted up here, I wouldn't have gotten it. But this zone made sense. I had this zone drawn throughout the day. You could have shorted against this. Like you can see right here, it was a, definitely a good zone to short against. For scalps, obviously, and then it paid at the end. So you need something to short against. You can't just, you know, go against it. Except for this zone up here. Like I said, that's previous support. Should be resistance. If we pop up again, we'll have the bearish divergence on the hourly and 30 minute as well. So our 30 minute hit 86 almost. And I was saying to members today, you can see that's historically overbought conditions. There, there. Here, here, here. Slightly poked it there. Slightly poked it here. Same thing here. But this is definitely the area to look to short. And we were coming up into the golden pocket. Close enough to the resistance zone. I thought it was reasonable to take a crack at it there. Um, so what I'm saying is if this would push up again, we'll definitely have bearish divergence on the 30 minute. And we'll be in that zone. 
I think this is the area for the short. So we got our initial push up, pull over, push up. If we would pull over, we have our we have our five wave up, and we can get a three wave down back to this uh, buy zone here. It's going to be tricky. Like I said, it's not going to be easy. But I do think the easy money's done. Bulls, I think we're going straight to an all-time high. You're actually kidding yourself. But good luck if you are shooting for that. Wish you the best. So that's all I have for SMCI. Like I said, we're just looking for a daily lower high still. Compared to this high over here. So 11.98. We can still push up a lot higher. You can see we pushed up really close to our previous one. I don't see it. It could happen. But I don't see it because of all this price history. And that's what I discussed in the last video. It's like two weeks of price history up here. So there's a lot of overhead supply. You don't just bust through that without a trend change. So we are looking for something like this right now. Push up. Higher low. Maybe push up again. It's possible. I think it's unlikely. I think we're in a longer period of consolidation. So I'm looking for more like this maybe. And bust up, you know, or higher low, lower high, and then trend change back to the bears. This can get really tricky here, and that's why I'm not going to trade it. So let it do its thing. I'm going to trade the lower high on the daily chart and uh, call it as it is. The one thing I did notice is I don't really use a two day chart at all, but with how volatile this was, I was looking at it before and it was holding the eight. And then now we wicked off the 20 on a two-day. But we're still looking for a two-day lower high as well. So, um, like I said, I don't really use this chart that often. But it makes sense when you have a volatile ticker like this. And it's gone parabolic. We'll have to see what happens going into tomorrow. But if we come up into here, that zone, I'm going to take another crack at it. With some size, not sure what strikes I'm going to use, but like I said, we'll have bearish divergence. We'll be at my zone. I drew this out for a reason. I've been planning this trade for a little bit. And like I said, I didn't follow my trade plan earlier today, which is why I ended up taking a loss. Would have been a winning day for me if I would have just been patient and executed according to what I thought. Because I would have entered shorts up here. But I did enter some... 950s, I believe, right around here. And I cut those for a small win. Nothing crazy. And I had a win on the calls. But all in all, I'm playing with profits on this stock right now. And just looking to reshort this on the daily lower high. And for all I know, it'll be a break-even trade overall. But it is what it is. Um, I think it's the most likely scenario, and that's what I'm going to trade. Could get a nice rejection. Who knows? I don't really want to swing a lot of size over the weekend. I know that. So any kind of rejection we get, like say we come up here and we get a rejection up here in my zone and we pull back into the end of the week, I'm going to take some profit. I'm not holding over Jerome Powell talking in the PCE on Friday and an extended weekend as well. So and an extended weekend as well. So I'm just going to let it go. Uh, might cut the whole trade entirely, to be honest. I'm thinking if we come down here, we'll probably, like I said, that could be the zone. Say we pop up tomorrow. Come down here. This is our new zone for buyers. Might cut the whole trade. So now I'm going to go over NVIDIA. And this is getting close to where I think the top is for short-term consolidation, you know, weeks, months. Um, we're extended on the monthly. I think we're like 130% or something, 150. Really far away. Extend from the 8. And at one point or another, we're going to come back and touch this 20 period moving average. We can still push higher. I think price targets are like 1100 on this. So we could try to make another push here. On the weekly chart, we still have that gap. SMCI filled it, but not NVIDIA. We're still extended here. Our weekly is at a 91. And I think it's like 12 weeks of straight up pretty much. So 
This is definitely due for some weekly consolidation. Timing it's going to be a little difficult, but um, on the daily chart, we had that high volume sell candle here that indicated consolidation in the short term was going to happen. And we went sideways, and I made a video on how we were tightening up. So higher low, lower high, higher low, higher high, no fall through, lower low, no fall through. And I remember making a video that this was chopping. I didn't like it. But a lower low, no fall through. We've been pushing up ever since. And bulls are strong. They're closing at all-time highs. It's the, these last two days were all-time high closes. Me personally, I can't discount this high volume. Like we have not had that outside of this candle and this gap up on earnings. And on this candle, we pushed up towards it and consolidated. So we're close to that top of this candle now. I think consolidation is definitely going to occur here in the short term on the NVIDIA. It's going to be a little tricky. Could play off uh, a break of this right here. It's our last hourly support lower high trying to form a higher low right now for continuation this is your most important level right now on nvidia and it's 9 46 64 thing is this zone right here could end up becoming short-term support on any kind of pullback so it's not going to be easy to short this this is the strongest stock in the market pretty much a new high here would have bearish divergence compared to this right here so price would make a higher high on a daily indicator would make a lower high most likely considering that uh the RSI was at 84 so we would have to really push up to negate it and we could we could push up to this price target who really knows timing at top is very difficult it's a lot easier to play the trend so dips are for buying really until you change the uh, daily trend. But I think a pullback could be pretty swift and fierce. You saw how fast that one came down. We sold off 11% in a day. And if we come up and get bearish divergence, I think we can get a much faster sell off. Fill this weekly gap ultimately. That's going to happen at some point. When's another thing entirely. This is not the ticker I would try to short, personally. It's strong. Their earnings are really good. The thing is, their next earnings are two months away. I highly doubt we're just going to rally for another two months, considering the extent of the longer-term charts into that earnings. Could happen. Anything can happen. I think we might pop up short, trade sideways to down into earnings, and then maybe pop up again. That could happen. Cool off some overbought conditions on the weekly, monthly a little bit. Once this finally goes, I think that's going to break the market. I've been saying that. Timing it, like I said, is difficult. Like I said, the easier thing is just to follow the trend, play bullish. Another stock that I'm looking at and I called out today is Tesla. So the way I've been looking at this is a longer term consolidation pattern, pennant. You can see you got touch there, there, here, one there, almost touch there, touch here. And I'm only doing two touches here just to kind of see how this trend line plays out over the longer term. But I have a buy zone here. I decided I was going to grab an initial position on this because what I think could be forming here, I could be wrong. So I think this could be an inverse head and shoulders. That's your neckline. Break that and try to push for 200 ish. Come up to around here. You know what I mean? Shorter term. So I got this in the small account challenge and I bought leaps on that today. The market's bullish. So any kind of continuation, I believe, could help this. This is one I think is undervalued longer term. So I'm willing to play this bullish more so than other tickers. And I'm willing to buy lower too as far as the small account challenge. 
and I think this is a great stock to accumulate. 100% my opinion. I would not make trades off of that. You do your own due diligence, but I like Tesla for the longer term. And I think this is going to be a great trade over the next couple of years and provides more opportunity than the other uh, larger tech companies right now. Another thing I've been keeping an eye on was brought to my attention actually was the marijuana sector. Um, Germany just legalized. Yeah, that's kind of it for today. Just some uh, brief analysis on everything. Again, if you want to join the Discord, the link's in the description below. It's completely free. Check it out. I post my entries, exits, and thoughts going into the day. I'm not always right. I don't always make wins. My win percentage is typically pretty high. Today was just a sloppy day for me, to be entirely honest with you and everyone here. So, But until next time, I wish you all the best in the markets.